some reason my Facebook does not like me in that orientation new phone problems okay well you're just gonna have to see me this way hello it's Valerie Lynn coming to you live from my mobile office space aka my car um, I'm exceptionally energetic today I've been listening to a lot of drumming music and um, hence I'm gonna be a little bit peppy as I go through this Facebook live I, I wanted to talk to you about well first of all let me check in how was election weekend for you uh, coincided with the Eurovision um, I don't know about you but seeing skates uh, Kate spin around and sing high notes and I kind of go backwards and forwards kind of did my head in I don't know what uh, what was on with that set but good on her for being able to do something that most of us would frankly just throw up um that's not the reason why i'm coming live so i'm very excited because of late uh, my resiliency in service workshop which really um i created um because a very good friend of mine amy talbot from the talbot center um had invited me to do something customized for her team and um got me thinking about it and so i created a, 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 a product to basically help intact clinician teams uh, psychologists um, or any uh, uh, health professional really uh, to remain resilient um, and not burn out and since then i've had some interest um, from some other um uh people <laughs> who've asked whether oh look my family's slowly coming in and going to be wondering what I'm doing um, who've been uh, asked asked me if I could do the same now in the course of chatting with people it's come to my attention that when I talk about resiliency in service and and having burnout prevention practices for probably today I'm talking to people who um, it is their primary job to care for others uh, that maybe there is an idea that I'm eventually going to tell people that they basically just have to stop doing what they're doing. Uh, like if, basically saying that they, they'll have to cut down what they're doing, reduce what they're doing, um, live a life of uh, monastic contemplation perhaps with um, extended rest. Now, if you've had a chance to watch me live, I do not think I come across as being particularly monastic or particularly sedentary. Um, it, is my, it, it is not my desire for all of us to exit the healthcare profession, um, lay down our lives calling and work and um, meditate. No, nor do I adv advocate for laziness because I think that's pretty much what the fear is that I'm somehow going to encourage people to leave their jobs or perhaps advocate for laziness. So I just want to set the record straight. Better prevention comes from work in organizational psychology in as much as it comes from the clinical and counseling realm, if not more so. And therefore, when you are looking at that body of uh, literature, the bottom line is reducing demands doesn't fix burnout because it doesn't necessarily increase job satisfaction. It doesn't make an impact on our culture and ethos uh, that has led to the burnout. And it actually does nothing to alleviate the systemic issues that have led to that. So what do I look at? Number one, I link into a body of literature that talks about the jobs demands resource model, um, which basically is what I mean when I say the skateboard, right? So essentially what you're actually doing is looking to how to negotiate the resources that are required for you to stay in long-term sustainable work, whether you're caring for others or leading others. And what you need to do is to look at a set of factors for the uh, ingredients in your workplace that you can negotiate without reducing work. So it doesn't actually, uh, unless you're working excessive hours where basically you come back to what would be considered industry standards, a best practice, okay? And that exists for psychologists, um, 
I say that you've got to build a therapeutic muscle. You've got to be able to see certain caseload. If, look, all of those things are worked within the organization and within the industry. Because I would hate it if someone from the outside came into my workplace and told all of the people who worked with me that they should now go on holiday and only work four hours a day. Besides that, that's not best. That's not what, uh, what I'm about. It's not what the literature is about. Um, that just reduces motivation and achievement as well. Okay, so what are the areas that we can negotiate? Well, besides workload, it's work type. Actually being really clued in into the type of work that you find meaningful and are engaged with. Uh, for psychologists, it could be actually looking at the type of clients that you enjoy working with, the kind of mental health presentations that you enjoy working in. It is, it's, it's all about also thinking about how do I actually adjust myself when I'm sitting with people? Um, how do I protect myself, not by exiting work, but being staying in the work and actually ensuring that I'm using the very things that I'm telling other people to use to keep myself psychologically safe and psychologically balanced when I'm even in session. Workload, work type, the way we do work. We want to look and see how we actually label the rewards that we are getting beyond money. The rewards that we're getting from the work that we do in terms of um, the feedback that we're getting, uh, the performative growth that we're experiencing, the challenges that we've been giving, we've been given. How are we actually being rewarded? And sometimes when we've got into a bit of a negative rut, uh, we've not been able to label those things or we've dismissed them. Now, once we can label those things, we can increase them. Another thing that we want to look at are things like a sense of community. Where is your community in your workspace? Is it in your office? Is it in your networks? Is it in the uh, people in the next cubicle? Uh, where is that community? Um, some of us prefer not to have that much interaction. Some of us need a lot more interaction. So there's actually a degree of self-insight that needs to go into that work. So a sense of community. Hello, I've got someone watching from Singapore. Thumbs up. Um, I'm talking about why I don't think laziness is the cure to burnout. Uh, fairness is the other thing we want to look at. How do you actually get a sense that what you're doing is fair? Uh, is you know it's in the way that the the tasks are queued up it's in the way that deadlines are produced in the way that uh, meetings are, are held you know all of that stuff become we look at to see okay where is the pressure point or where is the way in which work is being conducted uh, that is considered fair or not fair I'm getting distracted because there are people coming and I don't want them on my screen because they are my my peeps and I want to keep them private. Uh, maybe I'll stop there. There's actually a couple of more things, but I hope this highlights to you that it's really not about taking it, about getting lazy. Um, I have very high professional standards. Um, I have very high uh, expectations for my industry. I have very much... <laughs> Saying, take on people just stay there stay there um, I have I have um, a, a philosophy and ethos about continuing to do the work that we do to build up our work muscles so that we don't burn out I think I'm actually going to just hit pause here um, apparently someone needs to use the car I'll see you later